This is Victory House. Alright, tonight let me quickly uh, run through what I call the laws of love. Can look at your neighbor, tell them the laws of love. I would look at one law tonight, and anytime I have the opportunity again on a midweek, I will continue from there. <laughs> Somebody wants to show me love just now. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's open our Bibles to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And I'll read from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. Um, this is the letter from Paul. We believe he wrote this letter uh, to the Ephesian church. And it starts like this. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom in the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have given your life to Christ, you have another last name. Amen to Jesus. Amen. If you have given your life to Christ, you have another last name. Because some people, are, they, 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 they come from the school of thought that, who is your father? Who are you to talk like that? Don't you know who my father is? When they are putting you under that kind of pressure, let them also understand that your father is the father of all fathers. Let them understand that your father owns everything. So it is not bragging. It is not saying telling a lie to say my father owns all the real estate in the world yeah. because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Can somebody say amen to that? Yeah. So the Bible says here that the family of God here on earth and if you are giving your life to Christ you are part of that family is named after our God. The family of God in heaven, that means the people that were on earth that gave their life to Christ here and have joined the, uh, the, the, the heavenly assembly, they are also named after this our God. And so when we are praying, we are praying to our Father, the one who we have the same last name with. We are talking family business. So every time you come into the place of prayer, you need to understand that it's a family discussion. You are talking to your Father. You are not talking to your boss. Because in a, if you are working for a boss, you are not entitled or guaranteed profit sharing. Am I, am I talking to somebody? You are not entitled or guaranteed profit sharing. Sometimes they will tell you that when we do well, you know, in the organization, and sometimes you are asking yourself that if you really, really, if you, if you do super, super well, will you tell me how well you did? You will not. You just tell us some things and then you say, this is what we want to share. And then they will give you some stipend. And they will... But if it is a family business, it's completely different. You will share in the profit. That's why I know that somebody this year, you will have reasons to rejoice. Amen. I said this year on your finances, you will have reasons to rejoice. Amen. So he said, of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named, that it will grant you according to the riches of his glory this our father is living in glory and he has rich glory glory by definition is rich now when you add rich to glory then that's amazing because by by any definition you want to look at glory glory is rich you, you know if you were going to look at glory as beauty is rich beauty if we're going to look at glory as honor is rich honor if we're going to look at glory as weight or wealth is rich so when the bible is saying this our god is rich in glory understand that it is it, because of lack of uh, 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 words can convey the level and extent and magnif magnificence of the glory of God. And that's why this year when God is saying in several ways uh, that we will swim in glory, you should be very excited. Because that means that you will enjoy the fullness of God in the name of Jesus. So the God that is very, 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 very rich in glory, that that God will allow and make you to be strengthened with might by, uh, by his spirit in the inner man. That God will do something inside you because the way it works in this world is that if it does not happen inside, it will not happen outside. 
If it doesn't happen inside, it will not happen outside. Every time we come into church, what we are trying to do is to make sure that something will happen inside. And please don't come to church and focus on the external. And that's why sometimes when people come to church and they are trying to do the minimum and they are just trying to look at the pastor, when the pastor's high, you know, hits their own eyeball, that's when they look up and then sometimes they will do like they are typing, but it's not really typing, it's Facebook and stuff like that. That way, nothing will happen on the inner man. Nothing will happen on the inside. Or when you are do, with your Bible, you are one, one, one Bible is open here, Facebook is open there, and then you do a few Bibles, you see, and you feel like, oh, no, I need to take a selfie and show people that I'm studying the Word of God, you know, and that this is the Word of God. I, I don't have a problem with us showing the world what we are doing. But sometimes I think that showing the world what we are doing robs us from doing what we are doing. Because sometimes I go to wedding parties, and I'm like, well, when you come to a wedding, you should enjoy the wedding, and you should rejoice with the people that are doing it. And 70% of the people are like this. Like this. Or they go to a Christian concert. You've seen that, right? Christian concert, everybody is lifting up our hair. Oh, we worship, we worship, we worship. <laughs> Some people now bring iPad big like this, and I'm like, are you really worshiping like that? God have mercy on us. Can somebody say amen to that? So something has to happen on our inside inner man. And many times when it is happening on our inner man, it may not be apparent to anybody. Most people may not see it, but it is happening. When you, if something happens from within you, it will affect something that is happen, happening without you. That's why I believe that in this season of fasting, and as we are uh, uh, moving toward the end of this fasting, something will begin to happen in somebody that will affect what is happening outside in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then verse 17 now says, That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love. That you be rooted and grounded in love. Now, understand that everything that Paul is saying here is building up a case because it's going to get to a climax very soon. Just be watching it. So he said, be rooted and grounded in love. Keep, keep moving. It's now said, when you are rooted, when you are grounded, you will be able to comprehend with things. You'll be able to come into the understanding. There will be a light bulb. Something will open inside you. Something will wake up. Uh, and you'll be able to comprehend with all this, the, the length, uh, 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 the breadth, the, the, the height, uh, the depth, uh, all kinds of dimensions. And know the love of Christ that passes all understanding and you will be filled with all the fullness of God. I pray that for somebody here that anything that is lacking in you, anything that needs to be filled in this season, that God will fill it up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then verse 20 now says this, which is seemingly like him rounding up. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Now, remember he started this conversation when he started doing the prayer. Praying to the Father of glory, uh, to, or to the God that is rich in glory. And he's saying that God will do something in a love dimension for his people. And if God, if that thing is perfectly done... People will get into the realm when they are able to receive exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And what the major thing God needed to do is to root you in love. So love is not just something we discuss because it's about Valentine's season. Love is not just something we discuss because sometimes, you know, it seems like Christians, we are passive people. We like to be gentle people. We don't have, we, we don't like to stand for our right because some people, that's how they look at the church. Some people look at the church and say, well, the church should be bold. We should be activists. We should, we should confront government. We should, we should speak truth to power, you know. I, I mean, and there's something like speaking truth to power, but uh, it's just that the the, 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 the mode of operation that some people want us to go about is completely out of the way. So what G Paul is stressing out in this scripture that we just read is that he wants God to take you in a new dimension of love. And my prayer for you this month and beyond is that God will lead you in a deeper dimension of love in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, the, the major problem 
that this world has is sin. Or the, 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 what caused all the problem was sin. And the answer, the big answer that God had for sin, after man, that, after man fell in, in the Garden of Eden, is love. That's the big answer. I mean, that's the, the summary of John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish or will not inherit what came because of what happened in Genesis 3. So the answer to the problem of Genesis 3 is, Genesis, is John chapter 3. John chapter 3 and 16. In Genesis 3, man fell. In John chapter 3 and 16, Jesus himself used his own words to say that the way God wanted to combat what happened in Genesis 3 is that God was going to demonstrate his love. God was going to show his love. And ladies and gentlemen, if you and I also, we win in this world. If you and I, are not, we, we, we do things for God in this world, we need to enter into a new dimension of love and enter Enter that dimension of love uh, uh, in this season uh, is what is going to happen to you in the name of Jesus. You know, one of the things I've noticed that many times when we pray, when we ask God, when we are fasting and all of that kind of thing, many people don't have results. And the major part of the reasons why people don't have results is because their prayer is not powered the way it should be powered. The, the Bible says in Hebrews, Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11, 6. Let's pull it up. Hebrews 11, 6. <coughs> the Bible says, but without faith it is impossible to please God, to, to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So without faith, we cannot get the results that we, are, we desire in prayer. So we must believe. We must believe. But believing just by believing is not good enough. Something has to power that belief. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. Galatians 5 6. It says, for in Christ Jesus, or in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. That means that when you want to come into the place of prayer, and you are going to believe that God is going to answer you, because God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, you must also power that faith, that your belief in God must be powered by the love of God. That your belief in God must have something that undergirds it, which is the love of God. But the question now is, what is the love of God? There are many definitions that we can have for the love of God, and I believe that all throughout this month of, of um, February, we'll be getting all kinds of definition um, that we, will, we can have uh, for love. But there's one particular word I just use for love tonight, uh, just to uh, begin to um, draw in my point, and that's affection. Love... Uh, can be affection. You can define love as affection, you know, being a, having an affection for someone or something, God and, and all of that kind of thing. So you can, you can look at love from that, from that angle. There, there are several angles that you can look at, look at love. Now, I, I, this affection that we are talking about, there is a particular law that, uh, that makes affection works. Whether with God, whether with spouse, whether with siblings, whether anywhere, there is a particular law of love that makes affection to work. And that law is attention. The law of attention makes affection to deepen. The law of attention makes affection to deepen. Look at this scripture. And it's, it's applicable even, even to love. Isaiah chapter 26, Isaiah chapter 26, Isaiah 26, and um, let's read verse 3, Isaiah 26, verse 3, the Bible says, you will keep him in perfect peace. He whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. 
you know, I was thinking of this scripture all day, and I was asking myself, can this scripture also, can we remove that perfect peace and put perfect love there? And I was thinking to myself, well, uh, that would be over pushing it. Uh, I mean, you, you have to find other scriptures that's, that kind of corroborate that. That I mean, you know, how can you just throw it in like that? But I believe so, that you will keep him in perfect love, he whose attention is on you. Because wherever you put your attention, your affection will follow. Anytime your attention is to something, whether your affection is there yet now, very soon your affection will follow. That explains why sometimes you will see a good lady marry a bad guy. Have you seen that before? You see, I mean, you're just like, how did this happen? This is beauty and the beast. <laughs> how did this happen? How, how, how? It is because when you start giving what you should not give attention to, affection will build. Affection will build. I, I mean, I don't know if I've said, I think I've said this story before. Several years ago, you know, I, I, I was in high school. Where is it high school? If you use the equivalent here, it's like middle school. <clears throat> and um, I, I asked one of my friends, because he's the, I heard that he had a girlfriend there. So I was like, love, this whole love thing. How do you know you love somebody? He said, if you love them, you feel something. I said, feel like what? He said, you just, you, 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 you just know. You, I, I think he started like, you just know. I said, like, know what? How do you just know? He said, you feel something. I said, like, explain. He said, you, you, you know. He, he couldn't explain. So I was like, there was somebody, one lady that was in our set that people thought she was very fine. And I'm like, do I like this girl? I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what this people mean by love. So... Just, I, nobody told me anything. I just, when I go to, because is this a boarding school? When I go to prep, we call it prep, to go and read. We, we read in the evenings. So when I go to prep, I sit down. Then I start writing this lady's name on my book. And just, you know, diddling and so, like many of you do during service when you are writing. <laughs> <laughs> You are just drawing the picture in the head of a man. <laughs> I mean, it's the way not to sleep. Don't, I'm not taking it out uh, uh, on you. Like, maybe I say, Pastor, he's boring. It's okay. <laughs> you know? But, so, I'll be doing that. People will think I'm reading my book, but I'll be designing this girl's name. Because, I, okay, I forgot that. The guy also said that after a while, you may even be seeing them in your dreams. Say, really? I've never seen any human being in my dreams. Because when I close my eyes like this, the next time I open it, I'm awake. <laughs> I'm so tired. I just sleep. I said, say, see them in your dream. I said, okay. So I started doing that. And before long, I started dreaming. I started seeing this lady in my dream. You know? I mean, not like a nightmare kind of dream, but just maybe I came into a class and she was in that class in my dreams. And then after a while, I, I, I didn't mind seeing her again and again, even when it was not supposed to be the time I should see her. I would just be desirous of that. And the reason all this affection started building up was not necessarily because it was an affection that was there originally. Maybe it was there, I didn't see it. But it was an affection that came in there because I paid attention. Can somebody say amen to that? So in the, in the, in the school of love, love for God, love for your spouse, love for your siblings, if you don't pay attention, if you don't uh, 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 pay the price of attention, affection will dwindle, even if there was an affection there, or affection will not grow. So if you and I want to enjoy and, and, and fester our love relationships, one of the things we must learn to do is to give attention, even to God. Give attention to God. Give attention to God. If there is any generation that needs to hear that it's our generation, we are very, very distracted, including me. <laughs> There's a course that they have forced me to take because one time I was texting on the road, you know, and then a couple, well, I wasn't actually texting. I was, um, I was receiving a call, but I wasn't using hands-free. And then a couple pulled me over. They gave me a ticket. Then they said, they said I should take this course. I don't know. If, have, have they given any of you that kind of course before? 
it's this national safety council it's very annoying <laughs> it's like eight hours calls and you saw a cake you have to click you have to answer question every <laughs> and it's like you know I, it's so boring to listen to but i'm being forced to because if i don't listen to it they may revoke my driver's license and all of that so i have to i have to listen to it but one of the things that these guys have figured out that causes accidents the most they call it distracted driving i would argue and i will conclude that one of the things that has caused accident the most in relationships, in, 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 in the love uh, cycle, is distracted love. Or love that people are not paying attention. And it happens with God. You, we, we just come to church, people play the routine, people just, you know, when, when, when service comes up, they are singing, people sing, people are not involved. Because it is very possible to be going through the motion and your heart is not in it. You remember the story of Mary and Martha? That Martha was so busy that Jesus had to call her and say, come, 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 come. You have left the most important thing and you are not, you, you are doing the unimportant thing. Because if you don't pay attention, your affection will be disturbed. Your affection will be affected. Your attention will be uh, minimized. Look at this scripture. Um, Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. This is Jesus about to die. And he was just rounding up and cleaning up the house. Luke 22. And um, let's start from verse 31. Jesus was talking to uh, Peter here. And Jesus um, said, Simon, Simon, I mean, Simon is uh, Peter's other name. Um, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He says, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Jesus did not say Satan will not eventually sift you or try you. Jesus just said, look, what I have done is that I have prayed that your faith will stand up. Now, if you had just even adding Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 to this, you will understand that what Jesus was also praying for was that your love will stand because faith worked by love. But even later on, even Peter himself, Jesus asked him, do you love me more than this? You remember that story that Jesus asked Peter and said to Peter, do you love me more than this? And Jesus did it three times because the issue is this. Anything that can take your focus away from God, anything that can take your focus away from the things you should love, anything that can break your attention, anything that can uh, distract you well enough will soon take away your affection. The way many things happen in life, especially when it comes to um, bad things, <laughs> it's one step at a time, just a little here. Ask many people that are into pornography, um, that are into vices. Maybe somebody smokes and all of that kind of thing. Most of it just starts very small. It's something small. It's, it, it's just some little distraction, something that takes your way, your focus away from the regular, from the things you have been doing before. And before you know it, you do somebody that maybe just started smoking one stick, and then before you know it, it's just two sticks, and before you know it, it's just a pack in a day. And there are some people, three, four packs in a day. And how did they start? Just from one. Just from one. Something took you away from your cause. Something took you away from what you should be paying attention to and it now becomes a big hole. I'm praying for you tonight that God will keep you. He will keep your attention on the things that your attention should be on. He will keep your focus on the things that your focus should be on. You see this whole attention thing, we can even take it away and put it into other context. For example, let me, let me use this example. Fasting. I, I, I was just meditating the other day and I was asking myself, why is it that it seems that fasting is easier for some people and it seems that fasting is harder for some people? Because I've met people that be like, oh, you mean I will eat? I will eat till evening? I will die! <laughs> and some of these people don't even eat like some of us that we say we want to fast. 
Because some of them don't. Some, uh, okay, you, the person will not eat. You like, is this is this all the food? You you should come and see us. We that we are fasting. Come and see some of us when we finish fasting our fast, and then you will know that when we want to eat, we will eat. When we don't want to, <laughs> when we don't want to eat, we don't want to eat. And I started asking myself, and and sometimes I will say something like this when people ask me question about fasting. I will say the grace of God, and which is true, the grace of God. God God supplies strength. God supplies. Strength. But do you know another thing? that doesn't allow people to be able to do things like fasting is because they don't know how to organize their focus or their attention. Because you see, and even when you eventually fast, make sure that you don't allow the devil to keep your attention on food because the purpose of fast is to change your attention. The purpose of fasting is to change your focus from food and put the focus on God. Can somebody say amen to that? But sometimes, I know some of us, our focus is on that food. In fact, it's on the food at, <laughs> it's on the food for 6 p.m. I remember the first time I fasted, and then I, I carried the food to the church because I think it was like a, a, a drama group. You know, I was in my, I don't know what class, primary school, elementary school, whatever, you know, and I carried the food. This was 11, <laughs> this was 11.40. The food was there like this, and I was... I was looking at the food, I was looking at the time. <laughs> I was looking at the food and looking at the time. And you know, the more I look at the food, the more I look at the time, the slower the time became. <laughs> because my attention is on the food. If I focus my... Have you not noticed that when you are not fasting, you are not hungry on time? Can somebody say amen to that? Why? Because at that time, your focus is on something that is not really... Because hunger... When it comes to hunger, hunger is a very tricky thing. Many times when you think you are hungry, you are not really hungry. You know, it's just like, oh, I've not eaten and I need to eat. Maybe, or sometimes you are thirsty and all that kind of thing. But when you say you want to fast, one of the things the devil wants to do is that he wants to keep your focus. He wants to keep your attention on food. And that's why some people, when they come to places, when people are not, when, when they are fasting and people are offering them food, ah, it's okay, just, just give us. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not eating it now. It's okay. It's okay. So you have like four kind of food in your pocket. And then you are fasting and you are going around. And then when you get to one place, you look at the time, you say, what? <laughs> 1 p.m.? And since all this morning, oh, God. No, 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 no. God, you will help me today. Then the person will say, let us pray, let us pray. They pray for, and then look at the time. 120. Ah. <laughs> today, it doesn't, it seems that this fast, we are going to break it early today. <laughs> why, why, why does all these things happen? Because of attention. Because of it. So, when we come into a season of fast like this, one of the things you and I can do is to, before we go too deep in the fast, and this is what you can do for yourself every day, is to look for what you are going to put your focus on. Look for what you are going to put your focus on. When your focus is going to food, you can bring that thing that you wanted to put your focus on. For example, if I decided that today, my pri priority today is that I want to pray about a particular thing. Say I want to pray about church building. So I'm going to put my focus on church building. So when, when, when food or when hunger is trying to come after me, I will make sure I direct my focus to church building. So if I have a message that tells me about church building or a message that keeps my mind off food, I will listen to that message. Anything I can do to take my attention away from food, which is not where I want to put my focus, that thing will help me to keep my focus on God. So if there is anything you can do for yourself in this fasting season, and just generally fasting in general, especially people that are believing that after this uh, 49 days fasting, they will fast more. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. I believe some people are already getting some inkling from heaven. God is already sensitizing them that you can do this. You can fast on your own. You can fast seven days. You can do three days. You know, uh, some people might have planned to do the 21 days all the way, all the way there, and they couldn't quite make it. There's hope for you. Can somebody say amen? amen. I think we can still do another 21 days. We have not, are we done up to 20, 28 days? How many days are we now? People don't even remember. 26. So there's still another 21. So if you didn't do the first 21, you can still do your own 21 before the end of this fast, and you'll still be there. 
But whether you do that or not, every time you come into the play, play, place of fasting or you want to fast, you must make sure you are, understand your focus. And one of the things you can also do for yourself, especially in, in, in the context of fast, is to remove everything that is not supposed to be within your focus. Remove it away. For fasting, for uh, every other thing. Remove anything that will distract you or will take you back to the wrong focus. There are many things that people play around, even in fasting, that you should not. For example, have you ever wondered why did Jesus fast and the Bible said he came up from the wilderness? And the Bible didn't say he came from Lazarus' house or from the kitchen. Because some people think that, well, I'm fasting, I can't. So you go everywhere, you go to every party, people are eating, and then you think, well, uh, it's okay, I'll, I'll be fine. No, 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 nothing will happen to me. No, something will happen to you. If it doesn't happen there, by the time you get home, you'll be so hungry, or you'll be so like, this fast is over. And, and, and let's even leave fast out of it. What about, what about a, a, a boy and a girl? What about that? What about temptations that people have? People sit around the things and they pretend and they, they, they want to test the limit. They want to push the envelope. They want to say, well, we, we're not going to do anything bad. You know, we're not going to, we like ourselves, but it, it is dark. We like ourselves, but there's nobody in the house. We like ourselves, we're not, we won't do anything bad. Please stop deceiving yourself. Look at your neighbor, say, stop deceiving yourself. If you put temptation around you, because temptation is meant to make you to fall. If you are fasting, food can be temptation. Can somebody say amen to that? If you are a girl, you are not married, and you are hanging around a lady for too long, and you are giving her attention, you know that attention brings affection. Uh, and you, you keep giving the attention, you keep giving, and then you keep creating atmosphere, you keep going to places, and you don't feel like, well, I mean, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. No. You are not okay. Very soon, you are going to cross the line. But I'm praying for you that God will help you in the name of Jesus. So, what, what I'm trying to say tonight is this. The first law of love is that we give attention. We give attention to the right things. We remove the distractions. And if we remove the distractions, if we take away the things that will distract us from focusing on what we want to focus on, if it is God, we focus on him. If there are things that will distract you while you are praying, that's why we close our eyes. Have you wondered? Because some people, they think that closing their eyes is part of prayer. It's not. I can't pray without closing my eyes. You know that, right? Because some people, they say, you didn't close your eyes, oh, you didn't bow down your head. You, 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 you have not prayed. No, he said, you have prayed. Closing eyes, bowing head, all of this is supposed to remove distraction so that we can focus on what we want to do, so that we can give our attention, so that we can give 100% of ourselves into that thing that we want to do. Similarly, with the love of God, we love in God. There are many times you need to take away things out of the way. You need to take away distraction. That's why some people need to go to a quiet place to pray. That's why some people need to uh, 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 shut down their phone. That's why sometimes when you are fasting, you should fast Facebook. That's why sometimes when you are fasting, you should uh, put your phone at home. You know, I know some people when they are coming to church, they don't bring their phone to church. It's in order. If you have way people can reach you because you want to put your attention where your attention should be. Because you know that anything that will distract you will take away from that your attention. And when your attention is broken, your affection will not be as much as it should be. So my prayer for you is that this. That the love of God will grow more and more in you. That God will help you to love him more and more. That God will help you to love the people in your life that deserve it and you should love in the name of Jesus. And God, most importantly, will help you to focus. Will help you to not be distracted. In the name of Jesus. I want you to bow down your heads this evening. I want to talk to God. There's a lot of distractions. Some of us are distracted in different areas of our lives. And sometimes you don't know that you are distracted until something nudges you and brings you back there. There are sometimes people are driving. They don't know that they have been distracted. They've been looking at the phone and they've been laugh laughing. And before they know it, know it, an accident has occurred. You are going to ask that God, every area of life that I've been distracted, will you bring my attention back to the right place? 
in the name of Jesus. Every area of life that have been distracted. Some of us in our marriage we have been distracted. Some of us concerning parenting we have been distracted. We are focusing on the complete wrong things. But God can bring your attention back. God can refocus you. God can realign you in the name of Jesus. Are you praying tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus together? We're asking that you will bring our attention back from every form of distraction. Things that we have focused on, things that we have majored in, things that we have majored in the mind of. Lord, help us to come back and major, uh, and, and major in the major in the name of Jesus. Because we know when we give our attention to you, our affection for you will grow in the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed.